Okay. Good morning. I'm Rose from Grandma Rose's Open Pantry. And y'all have heard me talk a lot of times about blanching vegetables. And I went to uh, yesterday to a farm and I picked up two bushels of White Acres uh, Cream 40s. Lady, these, these were called Lady Fingers. They're all about the same pea. And it's just a little green and it's green pea. It makes a white soup. It's very, very good. It's delicious. And what I do, I clean my sinks real good with, with bleach water, and then I put water in them, and I pour my uh, bushel of peas in, in my sink, and then I wash them, and I've never had to uh, pick my peas when I buy them like this. Now, the garden we do, we, when I say pick peas, it is, if you will uh, come over here, honey, I have to go through my peas and I pick them up like this and I bring them over here and you will have some little stung ones like this one right here. An insect bite is what it's it is. It's an insect bite. You see that little dark mm -hmm. place on that pea? Well, I pick it up and I have a gar garbage disposal in this sink. So I just put it in my garbage disposal and there's one that's a little dark. It's got a little place on it. So I take it out. Here's another one. You'll see that place right there. So I take it out. And uh, here's another one. You see it? They're worse this year than they've ever been. I guess it's because of the dry weather or whatever. So, but this is the way I clean my peas. And I'll just take a handful at the time. And I, you have to be very patient when you do this. Well, the other way is, these don't really hurt anything. You, you're free to eat the stings if you want to. But if you're serving them, and I, I usually buy these for family and for friends when I, have, uh, when I have company. So I don't want any stung peas in my, when well, I most, cook them. Most people are going to pick them out. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> most people. Now, my mama, when she did this, baby, she didn't, you would not find one. But they will. Every once in a while, they'll they'll get past you. But you know what you do? You're gonna handle these peas several times. Like I'm gonna wash them. Then I'm gonna. This is uh, my what I call my blanching pan. So I'll put them in here. I'll put them on the stove in water, and I'll let them come to a boil for like two minutes. And that's called blanching. You've heard me say blanching. I blanch these, I blanch that. This is, I'm showing you today what blanching your vegetables is. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to keep going through these peas. There's another one. There's not a whole lot, and you don't lose a lot, but you do have to get them out if they bother you. So I'm going to keep doing this, and then when I... Uh, start to put them on to cook i'll be back with you so i'm fixing to have some fun this um pan is heavy so roy is bringing it over to the stove for me and all right you can start your blanching process all right, all right. now i've got it on number eight which is medium high and it's gonna take i well i don't know how long it's gonna take but uh this, uh, and y'all heard me tell you about my pan before. This is the same pan that my mama always used, and I'm almost sure it was my granny's pan. And so my granny, uh, used this pan too, I'm almost sure. And so, but it's going to take it probably 10 or 15 minutes. We'll see, uh, because you do it on kind of high, medium high. And then I will let them boil for, uh, two minutes and then after they come to a boil i've got a little basket right here and honey if you'll show them in the sink this is all that i got out of a bushel is those peas right there but you don't you do want to pick them out these were the stung ones yeah and that's just where a little bug stung the hole and it kind of went through to the pea but you if you can you get as many of those out as you can and still, as I handle them a little bit, like when I'm putting them in the bags or whatever, I may see one or two more and I'll pick them out. But you handle these uh, two or three times before you have to put them in the bags. So, 
Uh, I'm going to let these come to a boil, let them boil two minutes, and then... Uh, and what's the purpose of blanching? It stops the... Uh, maturity of the, the pea. The maturity of the pea. Mm -hmm. So the sweetness yes. stays in and there. And some of you may think this is a lot of trouble, but let me tell you, it is totally, totally worth it. These are some of the best peas uh, and that you will eat. And you cannot get peas like this in the grocery store. They will say they're like lady fingers or whatever, but they are not. You have to get them straight from the farm for them to taste like this. Now, we have a few in our garden, but I only had like, we didn't plant many. I only have like five or six packs that I put in the freezer, and I, I try to get at least two bushels every year to and keep in the freezer. If you go to your fruit stands, you can buy mm -hmm. these already shelled, yes. just like we did, and you get about... Uh, eight or nine packs uh, out Quartz. of a bushel, mm -hmm. eight or nine yeah. quart packs yeah. out of a bushel. Now, if you're just, you know, there's just two of you and you don't cook for children like we do, then pints will do fine and you get twice the pints that you would. So they're... They're a little bit more expensive than buying your frozen peas out of the uh, frozen section in the grocery store, but they're so, so much better. I've got two bushels of these that I'm doing today. I've got a bushel of... Uh, pink-eyed purple holes that I'm doing, and I've got a bushel of butter beans. And so I'm gonna be busy today. But, uh, and I'll probably come back on uh, when, I, I know I'll come back when these get ready and I show you how I cool them, then put them in the bags and get them ready for the freezer. But I'll also, I think I'll uh, do one on the butter beans also. So, uh, but y'all just hear me talk about blanching and I just wanted to show you a little bit about what I'm talking about when I talk about blanching. And freezing canning is a job, but let me tell you something, when it comes late fall, winter, and you don't have a garden anymore, and you can just go to that freezer, all of that work that you did during the uh, summer months is well worth it. So uh, I'm gonna let these come to a boil and boil about 10 minutes, uh, two minutes, I'm sorry, <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> now, as you can see, you see the foam on these peas? They're just now uh, beginning to uh, to get ready to come to a boil. You see those little bubbles in that foam? Uh, and they do this. They, they foam up like that. But you skim as much of that foam off as you can. And then you're going to put them in a... I put them in a pan of cold water and then I put ice in it. And that stops the cooking. Uh, so I'll skim when they, uh, you see that? They're beginning to boil. You see, did you see that? So, uh, it's going to take them about, uh, another probably 45 seconds to a minute to come up to a boil, and I'll let them boil two minutes, and then I'll be back with you. But I just wanted to show you what they look like, and if you do this and you see that foam, that is absolutely, that's normal. That's the way they do. So we're going to skim some of that off. Okay. Our peas are ready, and Roy is fixing to pour them in this uh, little plastic thing I've got here. And I'm going to run uh, cold tap water over them. And then, when I do that, then I'm going to put them in that pink bowl and I'm going to fill them with water, cold water, and I'm going to put ice over them and I'm going to let them sit while we are picking our oats. And you can see we have some right there and Roy's been, uh, he's been picking them for me. So we're fixing to get this, uh, these peas in our cold water. Let's see, I'm filling my little pink pan. I, uh, I rinsed them in that uh, strainer, and now I'm filling my big pan. I've got ice in it, so I'm just going to let them sit in here so they're completely cool. This is our peas that are ready to go in our bags that I've got prepared right here. I got the date, and I got what kind of pea it is. And so as you can see, I've got them sitting in this strainer in a plate, in a big plate. And... Uh, as soon as they, the peas dry some and all the water drains out into that plate, then I'm going to put them in the bag. And Roy's over here now picking uh, another bushel of peas. And 
one. So we he's got some done right here, and then he doesn't have that many more. So uh, as soon as he gets that done, then we're gonna put these on and we're gonna blanch them and get them ready for the freezer. No, there's not many stung ones in this. Uh, in either one. Pardon? In either bag. No, there was probably a tablespoon, two tablespoons, and uh, of stung ones in there. But you do want to get them out, and there's less in this particular uh, uh, bushel than there was in the first one. And, and and just in case you wonder why there's stung ones, years past. We could spray peas and things like that before vegetables, before everybody became conscious of the damage that sprays can do to you. But farmers now, to protect you, do not use strong chemicals uh, as they once did. And therefore, some of the insects get through the chemicals to the vegetables. Uh, even organic vegetables have approved sprays. You may not realize this, but they have approved sprays for spraying them because you just simply can't fight off the insects when you plant a large field of peas or lettuce or whatever you plant, uh, unless you use something. So even organic vegetables that you buy as organic have approved chemicals that they can use. Otherwise, we couldn't, farmers couldn't feed America just because you you just wouldn't have it so you're going to have a few stings in peas as long as they're not too high in number so that you're just wasting your food then that's a good sign that there's a few stings in your vegetables like that one so just some and you can look up you can google uh, and find out that there are chemicals being used on your chemical on your uh Organic. Organic foods. Now I put about three cups. I usually measure my uh, the amount of peas that I put in a bag. And I found that three cups is a good size bag for us. And if I need to, if I have a uh, family coming, then I will, uh, I'll do two packs. But what you do is you have to get all the air out of these bags. Now, if you have a vacuum sealer, that's great. I don't have a vacuum sealer, so, and this is the way my mom always did it, and I've done it for 50 years like this. So you start your bag, and you start sealing it, and you seal it almost completely. Then you take, and you press all the air out of that bag, and then you finish sealing it. And when you get through, it's almost vacuum sealed. As you can see, there is no, no air in that bag at all. So that's the way that I, you have to get all the air out of your bags. And you can't, when you're pressing down, moving the air out, you can't release it until you no. seal that last inch you of, cannot, uh, no. or it'll just pull air back in. Or it will, yes. And you have to have, but like I say, a vacuum sealer is wonderful. I just never have invested in one. So I start, I've got my three cups of peas. I start and I start sealing it like this till I get to about last inch. Then I press all hold the air. And hold. And hold. And then while you're holding it, you take your thumb and you there can see there's very little air. So then I just fill them out like that because I like them to be flat. Now some people will put them in the freezer like this and they stack them. Well, I don't. That's choice. That's their choice. I like to do mine out flat so they just stack up straight in my freezer. So that is the way I, uh, you put your peas in a bag. So we are gonna finish with these others. Okay, I told y'all that I would uh, do a video on butter beans, so we're doing our butter beans the same way, except butter beans don't get stung. Now, I guess it's because the hull is so much uh, thicker. I don't know, but you, you just don't find 
stone ones in butter beans. So what we do is we put them in a sink of water, we wash them really well, and then uh, there'll be a few, like you see the little trash that's floating on top butter right there? Holes it's the like shelves. butter bean holes and like the leaves of butter bean uh, on the butter bean vine. So you just have to pick that out, but you always wash your vegetables. And uh, if you're in the Cochrane area, Tomato Shack uh, has the peas, different peas in the butter bean. And I got these uh, because the Tomato Shack was out yesterday. So I got these at Gibbs Farms. They're located, their base is College in Street. Uh, Rochelle, Georgia. But they also have a place in Eastman. It's on College Street. So that's where I got these from, Gibbs Farms. And you can find them on Facebook. And the Tomato Shack uh, in Cochrane is also on Facebook. So that's just it's a little... It's on uh, West Dock Street? It's on East, East Dock Street. Street, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's just a little information that uh, for people that live in the surrounding area might, uh, might need. So... But uh, we're going to finish washing these, and I've got my white acres. I've got another bushel of white acres. I've got them on blanching. And as soon as they get through them, we're going to put our butter beans on, and we're going to get this show under the roof. These places for years, and they've always had good, fresh vegetables. Always. Home they home. always have. Yeah, these two places always have good, fresh vegetables. So, uh, And Tomato Shack, they have uh, plants, flowers. They have all kinds of vegetables, uh, frozen and fresh. Uh, so y'all need to check them out, the ones that live in the Cochrane area and the surrounding area, okay? This is our butter beans, and I'm, we got them washed, and they're in the pan, and uh, I've got them on medium-high, and so we're gonna let them blanch, and we're gonna put them in our bags just like we did our peas. Okay, this is our butter beans, and as you can see, they're getting the foam up on them too. And do you see now how plump they're getting? They were flat before. If you go back, if you look at the very first, now there's some trash right there. So what I'm going, what I'll do is when I, uh, I'm holding the camera, so I can't get it out. But before I put it in my bags, I will get that trash out. And I see right uh, there is another, I don't want to get burned. Okay, that was a bad butter bean, so I got it out. But I'll get that little piece of leaf. That's what it is. But you can see they're just now beginning to, uh, there's another piece. Man, let me get that trash if I can see it. It's hard to hold the camera and and get the, the trash. That's okay. I'll get it when I start to put them in the bags. But I'm going to rinse them again anyway. So I'm going to rinse them in cold water. But you can see how plump they are now. They're not flat. It's flat and green. Okay. Promise just came got my uh, just came got my camera. So okay. That's, see that little piece of trash? I mean, it's a little bitty, but... Okay, I'm going to promise you hold that, and I'm going to see what I can... See if I can find that other piece I saw in here earlier. But when these start getting ready, they're going to get plump like that. They're not going to be flat anymore. And that's how you know when they're almost ready. So, um... Uh, I'm going to look for that little piece of trash. It probably went to the bottom. Okay, there it is. I found it. See, it's just a little butter bean leaf is all this. When they put these butter beans, they put them in a huge, huge sheller. And the the uh, if they get any of the leaf in with the butter beans, it just it just grinds that uh, that leaf up while when it's uh, when it's beating those butter beans out of the hole. So that's the reason you get a little bit of uh, a little bit of shell and a little bit of leaf, butter bean leaf in your uh, butter beans. So I'm just going to give these about one more minute and then I'm going to cool them and put them in my bag. Okay, we got our butter beans uh, 
poured in our little strainer here. Promise, if you'll come over here, Promise is taking the camera now. And uh, I showed you in the pan what they, how plump they get. And there's another little piece of trash. So you handle these things several times and you rinse them several times. So are you gonna find all that little, all the little uh, leaves and stuff in it? But what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna just run cold water over these until they get cool. And then I'm going to set them over here in this plate and I'm gonna let all the water drain and then I'm gonna put them in bags. And this is my uh, second, um, second bushel of white acres and I had eight and a half uh, packs of those two. So that means that I've got 17 packs of white acre peas that I'm gonna have this winter and they surely are gonna be good. So I'm just gonna keep rinsing these and uh, then I'm going to let the water drain off of them. And I'm not going to, we're going to rest a little bit before I do the, the pink eyed purple holes that we've got. But when I get ready to put them in the, in the bags, or after I put them in the bags, I'll come back and show you how many of these we have. And uh, then after that, we're going to do our purple holes, and then that's going to be our day. So this has been quite a day, but it's, it's fun. We enjoy it, and uh, it's a lot of food for the winter time. So I'm still going to finish cooling this. I'm through with my butter beans, and uh, I had eight packs of butter beans, and this, this is my second uh, bushel of uh, white acre peas. I had eight of those, so... Now I've got 16 packs of white acres. I've got eight packs of butter beans. And over here in my sink, I've got my bushel of purple hulls. And so we're fixing to start on those and I'll have eight packs of those. So by the time I get through, I'll have 24 packs of peas, white acres and purple hulls, eight packs of butter beans, and that's gonna last us all winter. So. Uh, thank y'all for joining me this morning, and I'm not going to let y'all see me do the peas because I do them exactly the same way. So thank y'all for joining me. I hope this has been informative. I hope you've learned something from this video. Uh, and this is just the way we, we live our life. We, uh, we freeze and can in the summertime, and then in the wintertime we enjoy what, uh, all the hard work that we've done and we have some really good food so thank you for joining me and I love y'all please share please share this video because there may be somebody out there that doesn't know how how to do this and this this is really helpful to the ones that have never done it and would like to, to start doing it and uh, so I love y'all share this video and please subscribe to my channel and like. and like yes and like and if you put comments like I've had uh, people that uh, ask me questions about certain things and I always read my comments and if you have questions I always answer the questions so uh, and I would be glad to help anybody any way that I can because I've been doing this for years so I love y'all and I'll see y'all next time.